Welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Here we've got a little bit of office work that I've been doing with my um, little lens test gear. Now, today we're going to try and find out whether or not any of this work was valuable or a waste of time. Um, yeah, it certainly shows I've got lots of different characteristics as I started mixing and playing with lenses and separations and focal lengths etc. So one of the most interesting ones I'm going to try first. A pair of lenses back to back with zero spacing between them. It's a very strange combination but I got some rather interesting results. Now whether these results will mean anything is what we're now going to find. Do these translate into the real world? Before I try that compound lens which is two seven and a half inch lenses I'm going to try just one of them on their own to see what sort of performance a single lens has. I'm basically going to go through a procedure which I shall adopt for all my tests. I've made myself a special lens tube here although it's a two and a half inch lens tube to start with I've bored it out down the center there so that the lens sits right down here because that's where it needs to be when I put a pair of compound seven and a half inch lenses in there and because this is such a long focal length lens it looks almost flat so what I should have to do is look into it to decide which is the flat side and which is the curved side it's very difficult to tell but when I hold that up to my eye as I demonstrated in an earlier program, I can see what's in the background very clearly as though it's a mirror. So I know that that is the flat side and I'm going to use it flat side down. Okay. Now I've just got a steel rule here which I'm going to offer up just to give me an idea of what the focal length is supposed to be. So if I drop the table down, the top of my ruler which is zero, is roughly in line with the lens, I would say about there somewhere. This is supposed to be a seven and a half inch lens, so I'll go to roughly seven and a half inches and we'll make a mark. I think you'll see that that is quite a big hole in there and also it's got a halo around it. Hmm, that's bad news because the idea of the focal distance is that all the rays pass through a spot size at that point. Well if that is the case that looks like a three millimeter spot size. So something a bit strange going on there. So let's go down to eight inches and see what happens at eight inches. The hole is slightly smaller but now the burn around the outside is actually more compact as you can see. So let's go down to eight and a half inches and see what happens. The hole and the burn are nearly the same size now so it's look it's quite a big hole and that's eight and a half inches but hang on this is a seven and a half inch lens. So now we go to nine inches I would say that's probably much the same as about eight and a half. Let's go straight to ten. Yeah now we're getting bigger again. So the focal distance is somewhere between ten and eight. So it looks as though nine might be it. Okay, so that last one there is nine. It looks as though this seven and a half inch lens has got a focal point, uh, the point where all the rays pass through a single spot size is at nine inches, not seven and a half. And I'm not gonna to be too accurate, but let's just measure that spot size, 1.4. So, there's our first set of data. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to turn the lens over and we'll start off at nine, because we know that that's roughly where it's going to be. So if I can compare that nine and that nine, I think you'll see that the hole in the middle is smaller this way round. We've got a bigger halo, but we've got a smaller hole. So. It looks as though maybe having this lens uh, flat side up might give us a narrower cut. So there we go, nine, mil nine inches. That's nominally the correct focus. Now, we've got no air assist, so I'm going to put some air down onto the job with this little piece of pipe. Just 
to stop the flames. Well, I think you see that's a pretty horrendous cut. Did it go through? Well, just about. I could push it out. It's very badly shaped, as you can see. That's what a seven and a half inch lens does on its own. Okay, so we, we found this seven and a half inch lens was, was working with a focus that was nine inches, not seven and a half inches. What's going on? Well, I decided to bring my little old bit of kit back into action with its uh, red beam and the seven and a half inch lens that we've just found was nine inch focal length. We're going to have a quick check. Now because it's a very long focus lens it's going to be difficult to find exactly where the focal point is but it's around about there. About 7.6. <laughs> so look, it's near enough seven and a half inches. So what's going on? Now if you remember back to the last session I mentioned that there was a big difference between the way in which light refracts through this lens depending on whether it's red visible light or whether it's invisible IR light at 10.6 microns. So here we've got a classic example with a long focus lens. This red light doesn't actually tell us the truth. And that's a bit disappointing because I've got all these numbers and experiments here which actually might be useless. So now I've got my two lenses curved side to curved side sitting just here. The prediction is that the focal length was somewhere in the region of about 70 millimeters. So that small one there is about 100 millimeters. So from nine inches, putting two lenses together has converted this into about a four inch lens. Focal distance, we're talking about probably about 107, 100 and something like about 107. Wow. So let's try the same thing at 10 millimeters a second. Nearly, but not quite. But hey, the cut is not abysmal. It's a reasonably narrow cut, but wider than I'd want to see. And it's not a bad colour. You know, as we found out before when we were doing lots of lens tests, Plano convex lenses, China style, which are the um, PVD lenses, would appear to be better at cutting than the more expensive zinc selenide from America. So what we'll do, we'll put this at the back here in roughly the four inch position and we'll put that flat side down. It's roughly four inch focal length now. We'll just pulse that and see what we get. We're about there, I would think. We've stopped changing now. Around about 100 and This is what a four inch lens does at 10 millimeters a second. So that made it through at 10 millimeters a second. So we're looking here at the 10 millimeter plywood. Okay, four inch. Yeah, we had 10 millimeters a second, but not with a we didn't have a zinc selenide. P we didn't have a zinc selenide PVD to check out four inch, but we managed to get ten millimeters a second with uh, a zinc selenide CVD. So at the moment we've seen no gain. We've got to get something better than looks like fourteen millimeters a second before we're beginning to win with any lens combination because we know that we can get roughly fourteen millimeters a second out of a gallium arsenide lens or a two and a half inch. Now one piece of very good news is I've just had a delivery of pieces from Cloudray. 
we've got some half inch extension rings here. These extension rings are very useful to me because they will enable me to extend the position of the nozzle a long way down from any lens that I want to put down here because the focal length may be so long that I want that to be close to the work for efficient cutting. So, you know, we may finish up with something stupid like this. Stupid is not the name of the game. Efficient cutting is. We're not going to be swinging this thing around at high speed. This is only ever going to be used for cutting, which will be at a slow, gentle speed. So the fact that it's got a long overhang on it is relatively unimportant. So we've got a large collection of lenses here that have arrived. So we've got two different sorts of nozzle here. That one's got a, about a two millimetre hole in it and that one's got about a two and a half millimetre hole in it. Yeah, we've got a lot to experiment with now. So I think we'll probably start off by ignoring my figures and um, going back to using straightforward common sense. We're trying this combination now. I've got my seven and a half inch lens in the back here and I've got a four inch lens in the front here. So they've got round about four inch separation in them, something like that, maybe three inch. I'm not too worried at the moment um, because re remember we're into straightforward experiment and discovery mode. Now, question is, what is the focal length of this combination now? I might be able to make my life a lot easier by quickly trying to establish what it is like this. So if I bring that into focus, I'm using normal daylight, remember. What have I got? Something like maybe 25 or 30 millimetres. So, so that's 30, about 32 millimetres below that bottom face there. So that gives me a good starting point for trying to find a focus. So I'll set my focus to that at the moment, which is 30.5. And the table will drop away in one millimetre steps and hopefully I shall pass through the focus point. But let's give it a try. showing that we're heading in the right direction. In fact, the real focus is, if we take a look there, it's getting close to eight. You know, I think probably what we ought to do is to drop that down by another, probably three or four millimeters and start the whole process again. Now that is looking pretty good. Several things you can note from that. I would say that probably the best might be somewhere around about four or five but look how thin all the lines are for about seven or six millimeters that means we have a very wide focal range and that is good news we're going to set that to 34 plus four so we're going to set the focal distance to 38 and without my focus gauge I can set this fairly accurately to 38 by putting that down on the work and then dropping the table down 38 millimeters in Z and the good news is now I can now add air assist to this and get close to the work so I've had to just modify this bottom one so that it fits underneath this nut here which uh, it didn't fit before, so I couldn't get it screwed in properly. Now it's in clearance. So we'll now run our 10 millimeters a second test and see how we get on. So it's quite a clean cut, not too wide. It's come through. I mean, the best we had out of a four inch lens before was 10 millimetres a second and we've now got that up to 14 millimetres a second um, and uh, well, who knows where else we're going to go. Now bear in mind this is a 
seven and a half inch lens at the top here and a four inch lens at the bottom. We've still got a long way on the focal distance before we decrease the size of the beam on this four inch lens. So technically I should be able to put, let's put another couple of inches into that stack. Take that lens out of there and drop it into here. I'm going to clamp that lens in there. Like that, yes, yeah, not rattling. And now I've dropped the lens down by another two inches. And let me use my very crude focus test to see what change I've made to the focal distance. About 20 millimeters. And we do a focus check. I've got to be very careful now because this table is going to come up to zero and drop down and I haven't got <laughs> that amount of room in here for it so I shall have to do the focus test manually with some simple lights. 17. Draw another line. Eighteen. Well, the good news is those lines there are even thinner than those lines that we just got here. The difference, major difference between them. And there isn't a lot. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm going to stick with about 18. Let's try this new combination in program, same 14 millimeter a second. That looks as that made it through easily. Let's try 16 millimeters a second. It's just about made it through at 16 millimeters a second. So how can I get more separation between the lenses? Well, I suppose the first thing I can do, if I drop that clamp ring in there and then put another clamp ring on top, I've pulled that lens up as far as I can possibly go. So what can we do at the bottom? So we've yeah. put a thin clamp ring in there and still put the nozzle on the bottom. From there to there. Yeah, we've got about six inch separation between the lenses now. And we'll put a nozzle on there. cut on top, it didn't make any progress into the job at all. Now it's doing a nice engraving cut, so it's lost all its power. Fascinating, isn't it? So separation between the lenses has a big effect. To take the 25mm out that we put in, in fact we put a bit more in than that because we did the separation at the end there as well, didn't we? But well, let's give this new configuration a try. I'm not producing a league table of any sort. What I'm doing is gradually trying to work my way to better and better combinations. We've got as far as 16 millimeters a second at the moment. So what I'm leaving now is 16 millimeters a second and trying to better it in performance. If I can better it in performance, I'll push it up to 18 and I'll see if I can find a combination that will do 18 millimeters a second. So that's the way I'm tackling this. Well that certainly hasn't worked, so that's not a combination that's worth pursuing. That's all I need to show you on this occasion. I've got a lot of work to do, as you can see. I've got all these combinations. When I get something that looks as though it might work, I can try lenses in different places. Now, the one thing I haven't tried at the moment, and which I will try very quickly before I say cheerio to you, we'll swap this lens over at the top here, from flat side down, 
to flat side up. So let's just have a quick check where the focus is. Doesn't look bad actually. Yeah, that was quite a nice small dot. And we'll see how this works. No, nope, we've got all the smoke coming up, so that tells me that we're not cutting through. And sure enough, we're not cutting through. So that's a no-go combination. I've now just got a bundle of work in front of me, trying to find the best combination with everything that I've got here. I've got a long stack that I can work with. I can put lenses in all these different positions. I've got different lens tubes where I can fit lenses at different positions. This is what I thought might be the best combination, a four inch lens and a seven and a half inch lens. But now I'm gonna work my way through the two and a half inch and for two and a half inch and seven inch lens because I've still got this feeling that the biggest lens that I can get will bring me the most parallel rays onto the second lens but at the same time we shall get a compression of the beam. I, I might be going about this completely the wrong way but I'm going to pursue this strategy to start with and then I'm going to turn it all upside down and we're going to put a four inch lens on the top and a seven inch lens on the bottom. You can see I've got lots and lots of work and you really don't need to be involved with the boredom of doing all of this. So you've now seen my strategy and my method and I'll leave you to muse on it and I'll catch up with you in maybe a week or two's time when I've managed to get some sensible results hopefully and further progress than a 60% improvement which we seem to have got at the moment. Thanks for your time and I'll catch up with you in another session.